Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to post-process and fit the three-shape um, removable die test model. So, as you can see here, this is a uh, finished uh, test block and die, and then here's one that should be uh, similar to what would come out of the printer, washed and cured and ready to prepare for this test. So, in this test I'm going to be using my, um, my awl, which is uh, listed on the application guide itself and my flat edge blade um, which I'll be trimming um, the die with. And then lastly I'll be using um, the super lube uh, dry uh, lubricant to um, spray the, the shaft of the die. So with all that said, um, first things first, uh, the, once it's cured um, you can easily remove the supports on the front by just using your finger and just clicking these off. Um, now removing the supports inside the socket is really um, optional uh, if you want to make sure you have a good visible or a good view of the insertion of the die to the hole uh, and how those holes align. But what I like to do is I'll use the, and usually I do this under my microscope, but uh, I'll push on the edge of the support in the hole and it removes the entire part. Um, so you can remove as much or as little of that as you uh, want to and uh, just make sure uh, you blow out uh, the hole in the socket with compressed air before fitment so you don't want to um, you know ha have that interfering in your fitment uh, and then you do that and then for the die itself similar to the hole on the model you can use your little awl here and poke out these support structures if you want to see a clear view of the uh, that seating hole, so I'll just go in there and push on the edges of those parts. And when it's UV cured like this, they usually just snap and blow out, and that looks pretty good. The bottom supports are really easy. You just uh, you just twist and, and peel it off. And probably one of the most tricky parts, and really what I wanted to show specifically, was trimming this time. And again, I use uh, usually a microscope uh, to trim parts like this. Um, but really what, uh, hang on, let me see if I can focus it on my fingers here. Really what you want to do is you want to t flushly trim the bottom of this test die. And so you get rid of all the little support knobs and have it as flat of a surface as possible. Um, now there's actually quite a bit you can scrape off and, and uh, remove to make this part flat. And you'll notice during fitment, the first uh, step of fitment, you can uh, quickly determine whether it's uh, removed or, or um, relieved enough or not. So I'll just do a little bit here and show what that looks like. And, and make sure you get the corners notched off as well. Something that's important on the edges here and the corners, they don't really have much to do with seating. So over relieving those edges and corners and removing those even a little bit extra um, will not really change anything. So I just actually snap some of, some of the corners off. I don't want those to be the reason why my die isn't seating. So something like that. Uh, again, a little compressed air would be ideal here. But we want to work from the loosest... I'm going to get this stuff off of here. We want to work from the loosest side to the tightest in that order. And so once you have your model prepped, you insert the die. Actually, I'm skipping a step here. You want to spray this die with our super lube. This really makes uh, the part come in and out easily and gives you a better operating range. And this is how you want to test because this is what you should be doing for uh, your removable die models anyway. But a quick uh, blast around the margin if you were at all concerned about it getting on the prep uh, surface of the die, you can, you know, uh, mask it with tape or something like that as well. But this is, uh, this uh, spray on dry lube is food grade and it goes unclear and there's really nothing left behind. So I wouldn't be too worried about it. Let that dry for a minute. Now we are ready to do some seating. And again, I'm starting on the, uh, the loosest um, side first. So the 0 0.035 um, and we are seating it. And you want to make sure that the insertion hole, and it's hard to see on video in a camera that doesn't have a, a microscope, but you want to make sure the seating hole is all the way down. And if it's not, you view the seating from the bottom hole. And don't be afraid to relieve this bottom hole a little bit more. So use my awl, which is nice because it's, it's a bit larger than the hole. So the deeper you go in, it expands out that hole very nicely. 
inspect the sockets, make sure there's nothing in there. And you can view from the seating hole whether it's down flush. And if it is flush to that hole, the bottom of the die is flush to this hole, and you are not getting alignment on the on the pin hole on the, on the side of the model, that means you need to relieve the uh, bottom of the die slightly more. I'm actually going to go under microscope because I can't really see and record at the same time, but uh, it is a little bit raised. It looks a hair raised, and it is going flush to the bottom of the model, so I will just trim a little bit more off the bottom of this die and try to make it as flush as possible with my, my sharp straight blade here. Uh -huh. Just like this. Okay, just a little bit at a time. Again, go back to the the loosest, like this. Check your seating on the bottom, check the seating on the side, make sure it's all the way down. Again, I'm gonna look under the microscope because I can't really see. Oh, it's it's super, super close to being aligned now. It's totally flush the hole. I, just a hair more of a relief and we'll be good to move forward on the test. So. I can't get the die out with my fingers, so the all again, just push lightly from the bottom, and that pops right out. And so I'm just going to relieve just a hair more of the bottom surface again, trying to make this as flat as possible. And I'm just removing a very small amount of material there, and this should be good at this point. Um, I will uh, just confirm under microscope, but... From here, that seat looks really good, and that looks really good. Let me just confirm. Oh, it's, it's just about perfect. So on the now on the loosest hole, we have just about perfect seatment on the top and the bottom. And really, what we're doing now is you are wiggling the die and seeing if it moves at all. And to be honest, this die is not really moving that much. It actually is seating very, very well in this model. This setting, the loosest setting here, actually looks really pretty good. But the theory here is we want to go as tight as possible. So you can have um, things just generally fit better uh, and tighter. You want tightness. You do not want looseness. Looseness will change your contacts and occlusion and, and several other things about prep uh, fitting and seatment. But even this point... Uh, uh, 045 here is seating it's a lining that looks really good too it is not moving and really what you want to do is you want to move it up to the tightest until you can't pop it out so that is actually really in there uh, that actually might be my setting uh, that I would be happy with at this point but I'm going to try one more tighter round let's just see if this goes down all the way and uh, let me just check under microscope so this is 0 0.055. So now I'm seating 0 0.055 or the second to tightest setting here. And I'm pushing the die down. And you just want to again co confirm that it is flush with the bottom uh, pinhole there. And it is seating completely on the vertical hole. And then you want to push it with your finger, wiggle it, this thing is not going anywhere. So um, if this is still easy to... Yeah, I think um, I think after this fitment, I really um, like the 0 .045 and the, a little bit of the 0 .0, uh, 0 .055. So I might actually do... Um, I, I would probably go with the tighter of the two because I could do another round of uh, dry lubricant. And again, um, it's whatever you're personally happy with, but work up the chain, seat it all the way, co confirm seating, wiggle the die, and and uh, based on what number that you like most, that is what setting in 3Shape you could use. You could also potentially, our library is open, so you could also potentially if you find that there's really a step in between 0.45 and 0.55 that you like you could go into three shapes control panel duplicate one of our settings and just change the friction bar overlap to 0.45 to 0 0.50 for the in between and that might be the, the thing that might work best if you need that uh, and you a little guidance for that please let me know and i'd be happy to uh, make a quick video on how that works 
So um, that's how to do um, die testing and tuning on the Form 3B for 3Shape. Thank you.